This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey! What's up, guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, specifically another World Chalice combo tutorial video. We've got a lot of new capabilities to mess around with because we've finally gotten Trigate Wizard out of the Cyburst and Link Structure deck, and that changes quite a bit in terms of what we're trying to mess around with as far as combo potential. It's a very good addition into the deck because it gives you, you know, just a turn one body you can make that is already a built-in form of negation against your opponent's powerful cards that would, they would be using to break your board easily, like evenly matched or Raigeki or Dark Hole or things like that. But basically, it changes around the way you have to make plays and the way you have to structure plays, and it makes you have to reevaluate what your values are in terms of what you're trying to get out of a play string when you go into them. Now. Obviously, things can change, things can shift, variables are always an option with this deck, especially considering that you're drawing cards off Ningirsu, and you have additional combo pieces you could be drawing into your hands like Exodius and other World Chalice monsters. So, you could obviously rifle out some combos very easily that take four to five cards out of your hand, and are going to be able to let you uh, draw three off Ningirsu, and then summon Trigate Wizard and Firewall Dragons after that. But basically, what I'm here to focus on today is I'm here to show you combos that are the minimalist resource investment possible so that you can sort of start getting into your head what you need to start doing as far as the reevaluations you have to make and the corners that you have to cut, essentially. Some of the things you have to cut out of your combo sequences that cause letting you make Trigate to be possible versus not allowing it to be possible if you have uh, minimal card resources and such like that. So there are no three card combos. There are no two card combos that make Ningirsu drawing any number of cards and then go on to make Trigate Wizard because it just takes an insane amount of monsters to do so. Uh, but then there are only like a handful of three card combos that can actually get like a Ningirsu draw two and then make Trigate Wizard and there's only two specific combo hands that I know of right now that actually make Trigate Wizard and Ningirsu drawing three cards off of a three card combo hand and that is Venus plus Exodius plus Brilliant Fusion or Lee. Uh, but anyway, what I'm here to show you today is I'm here to show you one of the more simple World Chalice combo tutorials. It is, in essence, a two-card combo. It's the closest I can get to a two-card combo. It is the Agent of Creation Venus and it is World Legacy World Chalice as the two specific cards that you need for this investment. But you can have any other monster in your hand as just a combo piece to be discarded and add, to add Lee from your graveyard back to your hand, essentially. Uh, so it can be any World Chalice monster, thus circumventing the need to add back Lee. It can be any hand trap, it can be duplicate copies of Lee. Uh, or, or uh, duplicate copies of Venus rather, or the best result that you can get is to have Kyoto Waterfront instead. So that is what I'm going to show you today because it is the best result. It yields you a plus five overall, you draw two off Ningirsu, you get a Trigate Wizard, and you get a Gamma Seal on the board alongside a Firewall Dragon and all that sort of stuff. Uh, the Firewall Dragon has used its bounce effect, but it would not have used its bounce effect if you were using any other monster in place of Kyoto Waterfront because obviously you wouldn't have to add back the Gamma Seal. But anyway, so this is what I'm going to show you today. Just know that this can be any monster, um, and you could also alternatively draw Kyoto Waterfront off of your Ninyirsu, and then just play it, and then get your Gamma Seal that way, and uh, save the Firewall Bounce as well. So like, things get really freeform and fluid. And this is one of my favorite like combo strings of the new uh, of the new Trigate Wizard era of this deck. But anyway, so you're gonna start your combo off by summoning Venus and paying 1500 life points to summon your three Shine Balls out of your deck, and then you're going to link away with one Shine Ball after playing your Kyoto Waterfront, so that we get some lovely counters into your Imduk the World Chalice Guard Dragon. Now your Imduk's going to get you an additional Normal Summon, which you're going to use to tribute your Mystical Shine Ball to Normal Summon World Legacy World Chalice. Now from here, you're going to link away with these into your Orum the World Chalice Blade Master, and from at this point you should have four counters on Kyoto because you tributed a Shine Ball, uh, and then you just linked away with two cards. Uh, so then your World Legacy World Chalice here will trigger to summon two out of your deck because it was Tribute Summoned and it did go to the Graveyard. And so you're going to summon World Chalice Guard Dragon out of your deck, and then you're going to summon Lee the World Chalice Fairy out of your deck. In no particular order of what zones, uh, because they're immediately going to go away anyway. And you're going to use the Lee's effect to add a monster from your deck to your hand. And at this point, I just add one of the World Chalice Vanillas, whichever one is in my list uh, at the given point in time. Because it makes things a bit simpler going later into the stages of the combo, uh, if it is a vanilla at this point. Uh, because it's just it's going to make things easier for you overall. But so from here... You're going to link away with the Guard Dragon and the Lee, because they are two monsters with two different types and two different attributes. And you're going to link away into Ebe, the World Chalice Priestess, in your center zone. Now from here, 
uh, you can go ahead and use the uh, you can go ahead and use the waterfront since it's at five counters. It's maxed out at this point. You can use the waterfront to go ahead and add the gamma seal to your hands, and then you can discard the gamma seal for the Lee that is in your graveyard. So you've circled the gamma seal out for another World Chalice monster. Now, like I said, if you had any other monster in your hand at this point, if you didn't have Kyoto Waterfront, you just discard whatever monster it was to add Lee back. So if it's like a hand trap or something, don't even worry about it because you can use Firewall Dragon to add that hand trap back to your hand at the end stages of the combo. Or if you did have the Kyoto Waterfront, but then you also had an additional monster in your hand, you could just discard the other monster and keep the Gamma Seal in your hand. Like that just saves your Firewall Dragon completely. Um, going later on. But anyway, carrying on. What we're going to do from here is we're going to link away with the Mystical Shine Ball here, and we're going to link away into our second copy of Imduk the World Chalice Dragon. And now from here, we're only going to be able to get a draw 2 off of Ningirsu. Now, there are definitely ways that we could make it into a draw 3 with the cards that we have access to, because we do have a Live Guard Dragon Engrave, uh, we do have, you know, extra World Chalice names in hand. We have the Venus on the field. So we could easily use Guard Dragon's Grave Effect, summon, like, the Shine Ball back, make Proxy Dragon and make Ningirsu here, summon one of your dudes out of your hands, and then draw three cards off Ningirsu. But that's going to make it very hard for you to make any form of Trigate Wizard play with just these cards. If you have additional monsters in your hand that can be summoned, like uh, additional World Chalice names or whatever, then be my guest. Go for the draw three play off Ningirsu. But at that point, you're just rotating the monsters in your hand out for draws. You're not really getting any additional advantage off of them. You're, you're doing a one-for-one -one conversion, taking a monster out of your hand, putting it into your board, and then you are drawing a card off of it, an extra card off of it, rather. So... There's a uh, so there's that sort of stuff to consider going into uh, going into this play and keep in mind that uh, that you do have you do have two cards in your hand at the uh, start of this combo outside of the three cards you started with so I'll put these over here just so we don't like really forget about them but so from here is the only real way for you to make a live Trigate Wizard play and then make Firewall and Trilink uh, the uh, the Trigate Wizard it's for you to only draw two cards off in Gearsu. So it's like, it's what I was mentioning before. You have to, you to reevaluate what you have to do where, and you have to make cuts in certain areas to get benefits in other places. I'd rather give, I'd rather get rid of drawing one card if I'm going to be guaranteed taking away a card from my opponent, and that is what Trigate Wizard essentially does for you. But so you're going to link with the Imduk and the Eve, the World Chalice Priestess, into your Ningirsu. And then from here, your Ningirsu is going to be mandatory chain link one to activate. Even though there's no World Chalice monsters next to it, it does mandatory activate. So you don't have to worry about that. It will activate as chain link one, and then Eve and Imduk will activate as chain link two and three for the two World Chalice monsters that are in your hand. And so you will summon them into the zones that are next to the Ningirsu. And then from there, you will draw two more cards. So you've gone up to four cards in hand. You have the two that were alongside your combo when you first started. And then you have whatever two you just drew off the Ningirsu. So from here, your board is very melded and very like capable of going into further plays. I actually really like this combo string a lot for a specific reason. And that is that you don't use your Orum yet and you also keep your Venus on the field. And you keep your Venus on the field as far away from where you're doing your combo sequence. So at any point during this, if you drew Exodius, if you drew Soul Charge... Um, any of those like really superior extenders that combine very well with Venus, if you have any of those in your hand at this specific point, um, like if you drew them off Ningirsu or whatever, then you can definitely summon the Exodius in particular here, and you still have the Venus over here just chilling as far away from the action as she needs to be uh, in order to summon more uh, Shine Balls out of your deck and do stuff like that. And then you're just guaranteed Trigate Wizards and Firewall Dragons and all that sort of stuff. At that point, it just becomes easy. Uh, but basically, so what you do to continue from here is that at this point you've drawn two off your Ningirsu and you're set up in this little, uh, this little situation here as far as how things want to go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start upgrading our card resources in terms of making one monster worth multiple and going into stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to link away with the Lee the World Chalice Fairy and the Ningirsu and we're going to link those into Firewall Dragon in the zone that Orem opens up for us. So, from here... What we have to do is what we want to do really is we want to get full value out of this Orum effect and we want to put something here that's going to be pointing at whatever Trigate Wizard thing we're doing here. So that's what we're going to mess around with. And that also means that we're trying to get this Firewall Dragon back live and online to at least return the Gamma Seal to our hands for this entire play to have been plausible. So what you're going to do is the reason I add the vanilla specifically um, is because you really do need a vanilla at this point in time because you're going to have to use a vanilla to make Link Spider and a vanilla to be able to put a World Chalice monster here. So what you're going to do is you're going to link away with the Chosen, and you're going to link 
into your last Imduk the World Chalice Dragon in the zone that Orm is pointing to. Then from here you're going to use Orm's effect, and you're going to use it to tribute the Imduk, and you're going to get back either Eeb or Ningirsu into this zone. I personally prefer Ningirsu because it's worth one extra monster. It doesn't have the protection effect that Eeb provides, but that protection effect isn't really useful when it's over in this zone anyway. And also, uh, like the Ningirsu, like I said, it's just worth three monsters instead of just uh, instead of just two. And also, its removal effect is pretty valuable, paired in in uh, conjunction with Trigate Wizard's removal effect as well, because Trigate Wizard also has a removal effect, which is pretty damn good. But so from there, you've summoned the Ningirsu here back off the Orum, and you've used Orum's effect, so you've gotten full value out of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to link away with the Orum and the Venus that is left on the board, and we're going to link those away into the Trigate Wizard in the zone in between Firewall Dragon and in between the Ningirsu. So now at this point, Trigate Wizard is co-linked with two monsters, and Firewall Dragon is now co-linked with Trigate Wizard. So we're going to use that to our advantage. We're going to use Firewall Dragon's effect here. If you did, if you had to get rid of the Gamma Seal like I did in this combo uh, like example, you use Firewall Dragon's effect to return Gamma Seal from your graveyard to your hand. And then from here, we still have that World Chalice Guard Dragon loaded in our graveyard. So you'll use Guard Dragon, and you'll banish it. And you'll banish it to bring back either whatever World Chalice Vanilla you had, or you can just bring back a Shine Ball. And you bring it back specifically in the linked zone next to Firewall. One, it's the only place where it can come back, unless you've messed up, uh, because you can't summon it in the extra monster zone, and World Chalice Guard Dragon has to summon it into a linked zone. Uh, but you summon it here specifically so you can trigger Firewall Dragon Special Summon from Hand Effect. So... You're then going to link away with the Chosen by the World Chalice into your Link Spider. That is then going to trigger Firewall Dragon to special summon a monster out of your hand, and in this case, it's going to be the Gamma Seal. So you special summon it as far away from the Firewall Dragon as you can get it, uh, just so that you have access into like further extending Link plays, uh, like the next turn or whatever, to make things here and here. All that sort of stuff and nonsense, but basically, what you've ended up with at this point is your ending board for the simple three-card investment that you put into the play. And so what you end up with is you end up with one, two, three, four, five, six monsters on the board, or six, uh, six cards, five monsters and one Kyoto Waterfront, which is fueling your Gamma Seal. And then you have four cards in hand, two of which you started with and two of which you drew off Ningirsu, so you're at a plus five overall, having ten cards to your name. So this is very good for you. You've drawn two cards, you're at a plus five to card advantage, your Firewall Dragon has been used in this specific example, but like I've said multiple times, if you had any other monster in your hand, instead of discarding Gamma Seal for Lee, you could just discard whatever other monster you wanted to and keep the Firewall Dragon loaded. And then, it, like I've also said, if you didn't have Kyoto Waterfront and you just had a monster in your hand in general, you do this exact same play, you keep Firewall Dragon loaded, you still have a Trigate Wizard negation, you have Firewall Dragon protecting the Firewall, uh, the Trigate Wizard's negation play because Link Spider is the weak point there of uh, Normal Summon a Monster and Crash over Link Spider to turn off Trigate Wizard's negation. That's a real weak point. Uh, but at this point, uh, burning the Firewall Dragon to make sure the Gamma Seal hits the board is something that I consider a valuable interaction because even though your opponent will have to get rid of their battle phase, normal summon a monster, deal with Link Spider just to turn off Trigate Wizard, they can't turn off Gamma Seal. So like that's a that's a huge factor. So I'm okay with burning the Firewall Dragon's bounce effect to put Gamma Seal of all things on board with negations. Uh, that's going to negate at least two cards. Um, Instead of, you know, keeping it live to protect Trigate Wizard, because that's honestly what it would be used for instead if you weren't doing the Kyoto Waterfront Gamma Seal play. You would be using Firewall Dragon's bounce effect on your opponent's turn, and you'd be using it to keep your opponent from swinging over Link Spider so that you could then use Trigate Wizard to negate a card, and then you go from there in terms of whatever the rest of your cards in hand are as far as hand traps or whatever, so... That's basically the combo. Uh, this is what I wanted to show you. I've got a couple other more extreme combos that I want to make more videos for and show you guys. Like I've already said, uh, the other three-card combos that like definitely get you Ningirsu draw three plays and stuff like that, which is uh, Venus Exodius plus Brilliant Fusion or Lee. It doesn't really work that efficiently with World Legacy World Chalice, but it does work with Lee or Brilliant Fusion adding the Lee to your hand. So there's a bunch of things that I want to explore there. But for this one, this is one of the more enjoyable ones. This was one of the first ones that I discovered in terms of being able to actually make it work. And so this is one of the first ones I wanted to show you guys because it sort of eases you into the concept of, oh, I'm not drawing three off Ningirsu anymore because some people uh, might lose like some like sleep over the fact that they can't draw three instead of draw two, but it's really not that big of a problem because you're going to offset that card back into your uh, resource advantagement by using, you know, Trigate Wizard as a negation. Like, 
you draw three cards and take no cards away from your opponent is the exact same as drawing two cards and negating a card your opponent plays. Like, it's the exact same thing. Arguably, this is better because you could play some, you could negate something that had a cost of discarding a card or something like uh, Trade Ends or Melody of Awakening Dragons or any other sort of card that might be played in any sort of weird deck you might face up against. You can negate something that de deals with two cards for the price of one. Uh, so there's all that sort of stuff that you have access to. Uh, but anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I've rambled on long enough. I hate making these things as long as they are, but I mean, I try to explain everything in a coherent way to where people can understand them, but I guess that just takes time, and it, it annoys me that these videos are as long as they are, but shit, man, I guess I just can't do this any faster. <laughs> but anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, let me know any other combos you'd like to see, if there are any specifically that you'd like to see, and all that sort of stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the nonsense you usually do. Check out the links in the description of my Facebook fan page, as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support the channel directly and help me be able to improve quality content and keep content flowing out, then Patreon is obviously the best way to do so, as well as getting access into my private Discord server to chat with me and others on a daily basis, or getting access into a Yu-Gi-Oh! monthly product giveaway, which I'm going to be starting to do and starting to actually really heavily advertise and do videos for very shortly because I've got to acquire the product. But anyway, <laughs> with that said, as I've already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video. But anyway, now the video's over, I'd like to give a special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, and Eric Gertson, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a lot more than you may know. You have my eternal gratitude, and you guys are forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support.